Hi, folks. Back again with History Matters and So Does Coffee. Um, as I mentioned last week on Friday, as always, my partner in crime, Matt, and I, and Newbie, uh, will be recording, pre recording um, episodes so that we will not miss a week after the many, many, many weeks we've done this. And you'll notice last week and this week, I did not offer a number because I can't remember numbers from one week to the next. And there's no chat for me to glance down for Kara Lee to say 70, 70. <laughs> so at any rate, um, I do not want to miss an episode. So here Matt and I are. And as I mentioned last time, I'll mention it briefly again. My thought for these brief episodes would be, um, I thought, what kinds of questions could I ask and answer? I thought of obvious questions. Who, why, which, which, who, why, what, where, when? A lot of other W's too, but those are the ones I thought of. And then I thought, okay, how about if for the three weeks that I won't be here, I will be traveling around on vacation, probably tweeting. If you really miss me, you could probably find me on Twitter. Um, I will pick one of these W's uh, and talk a little bit uh, about a, a piece of evidence that relates to it and what that suggests, as always, on History Matters about the past and also about the way we understand the present. Um, before I begin, I have to mention something, and if I mention it now, then maybe at the end I will remember this. I can't believe it. Matt and I were just howling with laughter about five minutes ago. So we, we just recorded. We're, we're recording three in a row. <laughs> we just recorded last week's episode. <laughs> we ended it. And first I was like, oh, Matt, we didn't talk about your background. And then I said, I forgot to pick up my coffee cup. <laughs> Which, every week, every week. I forget that coffee cup and this is <laughs> people are so essential right you weren't there <laughs> i didn't pick up my mug so um i that is I, that's still amusing me that uh i really didn't but it's sitting there <laughs> it's coming it's coming okay that said let's talk about the, the w that i'm going to talk about um today's w is that i want to talk about is when uh, i want to talk about times when, when is important, and a document that made me realize that in an interesting way. This was when I was working on my dissertation uh, in graduate school at UVA, and um, I was trying to figure out the 1790s, right? I, and that's because most of my dissertation takes place in the 1790s, politics in the 1790s. So I'm reading widely, and I'm reading a lot of the published papers of Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Washington, Hamilton. At that point, there were not databases. Um, you were actually pulling volumes off shelves and leafing through them and looking at indexes and, um, and, and even like sometimes finding in other places collections of letters with dates. In this case, I don't remember where I first saw this what I'm about to mention now, but I saw it more than repeated more than once. What I found at some point was a letter from Thomas Jefferson. I don't even remember who it was to, but it said something like, um, it's things are so bad here now that when you see someone who you disagree with politically, you cross to the other side of the road rather than have to walk by them and exchange greetings, right? First of all, that's, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> extreme polarization anyone um so that's interesting but what struck me at the time was it, it and it's a letter talking about this polarization where people in opposite divides can't even tip a hat to each other really really polarized parties or semi-parties the letter in whatever book i saw it in was dated 1793 and i thought to myself when looking at it wow i mean 1793 the Citizen Genet affair was controversial, but I didn't think in 1793 people were that polarized yet. It doesn't seem right to me. But I looked around and I saw other people using that letter and noting 1793. So I thought maybe I misunderstood 1793. Maybe he's writing for effect, right? That's always possible that he he's trying to have some sort of an impact with what he's writing. But eventually I was so puzzled by that letter that I went to find on the microfilm the actual letter. It's dated 1798. <laughs> the three and the eight, I guess, looked similar. But the thing that struck me was whoever used that letter probably used it from someone else's book. 
And that person said 1793. So what you have is a lot of historians who didn't go back to look at the original and often you don't need to with particularly founders letters and papers because you can find them all over the place and in a reputable collection they're accurate right from the from the people who are collecting and publishing their papers always accurate so um it wouldn't have been surprising that people didn't go to the microfilm but but what i kept thinking about was the fact that everyone like me was like 1793 1793 1793 and i remember just looking at the microfilm and i was sort of like well of course it's 1798 now it makes sense right the letter 1798 in the 1790s was by that point people are polarized there's fighting in the streets there's competing cockades about france and britain and that made perfect sense um so in a sense the the, what the letter was saying was less interesting because it fit more into the narrative as I had it, but it, it was the fact that it was so consistently misdated for so long that, well, it made me think about two things. It made me think about first, the importance of, of and again, this is also some, something that not only do we talk about here, but everyone talks about everywhere in this great age of mis and disinformation, um, the need to check your sources, right? To really check your sources. And I'm guilty about of this sometimes on social media like everyone else in which I'll see something shocking and it reads to me pretty true and I'll quickly check and I'll be like, oh, that seems true. And then I'll check in more depth 10 minutes later and I'll be like, yeah, it's not true enough for me to feel comfortable. Boop. So the importance, even when something seems like, what could there possibly be to question? It's a Thomas Jefferson letter and it says 1790 three in a book how could it not be always always worth it again kind of like last week when i was talking about william mcclay's diary and i said even obvious things you should question them in this case even seemingly official things you should question them because seemingly official things or things that are come in you know books of great, great reputation even so it's humans at the heart of all of them so there can be mistakes you're, you could be misunderstanding something and it's, this letter shows it to you, but in one way or another, asking that question rather than just assuming, as I'm sure some people did, oh, 1793 was bad, Boop, move on. You learn much more that way and see history more clearly that way. The other thing that this taught me, and I kind of knew it already, but this really drove it home for me. I did focus in that first book a lot on the 1790s and the fact of the matter is when you look at that decade, um, a lot of things happen in the 1790s. It's a very fraught decade. Um, there are a lot of conflicts. There's a lot of stuff happening close to each other, events and controversies and dangers. And But as tempting as it is to say the 1790s was a politically fraught decade, um, it's not one big blob of fraught. Right? The 1790s, what was happening and happening and happening were for different reasons. It was building on itself. They related to different things. People predicted different outcomes. In other words, uh, just like I say very often, there's no big blob of founders. Um, it's not any useful to just lump the 1790s into bad decade because this reminded me, just this little piece of evidence here, there actually is a pretty huge difference between 1793 and 1798. And as a new graduate student, that was a good thing to sort of come and smack me in the face. Like, Joanne, you know, things are can be really different. I was about to say in a year, we live in a time when things can be really different in a week or a day, right? If that's not a reminder of the degree to which you need to think about the reality of the moment and what's happening and the fact that things that seem to be official in declaring what's happening might be generalizations or might be inaccurate. So um, this stuck in my head forever, be, first of all, because I was I was pleased with myself, right? I was like, <laughs> I knew that wasn't 1793. Um, but also it really drove home for me something that I do a lot as a historian, more than I need to, I'm sure, um, which is to want to see the piece of paper, uh, the document, the something, particularly if a claim is really important. Um, so that I can actually know that what I'm about to state is actually true. Um, okay, I think that's, I feel like I was going to say something else with this W, um, and at the moment I cannot think about 
what comes with the W. Maybe it'll come to me as as Matt, my partner <laughs> in crime, and I briefly chat this time because <laughs> I'm so still amused at the fact that give me a chance and I don't pick up the mug. So I'm going to pick up a mug and Matt's going to talk about the background. Um, I confessed to Matt before we sat down, I don't have special mugs. So these are really like substitute episodes. I don't have a special mug. I have the mug that I was drinking coffee from <laughs> this morning. And so you are getting the on the ground realistic mug. <laughs> <laughs> This is an evidence mug. This is the one I was actually using. I've used it before. Actually, it's maybe it's appropriate. It's C-SPAN. It's a news organization. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So that's kind of that's kind of appropriate, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's there's no special meaning for that mug other than it, I pulled it off the shelf for reasons I do not remember. <laughs> anyway, so uh, now Matt. Yeah, I went with. So if you saw last week, it obviously it was just a fun background. That's what I was. So the the I'm continuing with the. From last week, the dad jokes, which is I'm going with just interesting, fun backgrounds for these three episodes. And so uh, last week, uh, hopefully you picked that one out. I'm not going to tell you what this is. So you you have to. Ooh, OK. You have to tr you have to tweet this. So when I you bet, I bet somebody I, somebody's going to get this one, they're going to be in, in chat right now. And, I, and I'm going to guess someone, you know. Like, yeah, um. <laughs> well, you got you got it right away. So I, I, I mean. I did. Now look so, at okay. May I say that last week and this week, I'm sitting here talking to you guys by name, <laughs> and you're not here. <laughs> I know it's a little, it's a little weird, a little weird, but but that's how our community operates. That's how we work. So we are a community. Um, yeah, I, I so, got it right away. Yep. I'm guessing some of you will too, but I'm not going to say what it is either. Yeah. So so but when you get it, actually, tweet it. Yeah. Uh, tag Joanne at JBF seventeen fifty five. And tag me at Matthew T. Messias, and then at History Ed for NCHE, and uh, tell us what the background is. So that that's that we'll play that game. That'll give us something to our community to do since there's yes, no exactly. bingo. That will, that will continue. Yes, yes. but no, <laughs> honestly, that it's I, I really appreciate this win because it, it makes such a difference, right? I mean, because there are so many nuances that happen in his, historical documents, histor historical sources, historical sites, where, you know, the win really does matter. I mean, I think that it's, it's a fascinating way to think about it. No, it's true. Very little tiny details can have very big you yeah. know, impacts. It's, it's true. But I'm not going to say anything else because I don't want people to, I'm, I want people to figure this out on their own. Like I said, I'm sure they will. We'll see it in on Twitter the week after this uh, however right. i'm not going to try and guess how many weeks this is but at any rate uh as always everybody um thank you for coming even with me not being here live and matt not being here live uh for sustaining what is now a semi-discourse since only you are live <laughs> you're not. um but as i always say an important one i hope you guys have a wonderful week uh next week will be the last substitute episode and then after that we will be back live and I think the word we decided last time Matt was super powered super powered <laughs> and I don't know what that means um but at any rate uh see you see you guys next week see you soon yes soon is good uh, <laughs> soon is very good have a great week guys all right bye everybody